Hi, my name is Irina, and I'm from Moldova. Please like and subscribe. I was born to poor parents. My dad worked as a janitor, and mom was a maid in a rich family's house. And no matter how hard they worked, they always seemed to be struggling for money. Once when I was four, our landlord barged in and threatened to throw us out for not paying rent on time. Please, just give me a week. Irina fell ill this month, and we had to spend money on her medicines. I promise, I'll pay the rent soon. Just then, the landlord's eyes fell on the silver chain Mom was wearing. Why don't you give me that chain till you arrange the money? Mom reluctantly took it off and gave it to him. It was the only jewelry she had, and I was so angry she had to give it away. Dad, I'll go to work with Mommy and we'll get some extra money. You can use that to pay the rent. Dad hugged me and kissed my forehead. I'm so sorry, my love. I promise, things will get better. But they never did. We kept living under the curse of poverty. I hate poverty. Poverty is ugly. I often wondered why we were poor while other people were rich. In fact, as a child, I had a really inquisitive mind, and I always had a lot of questions about everything. Mom, why is a rose red but leaves green? How many stars are there in the sky? Who tells the sea to stop on the shore? Why are my eyes different from yours? I had really unique amber eyes, unlike anyone in my family or even our town. Sometimes complete strangers stopped by to give me compliments on my eye color and my thick brown hair that mom oiled every week. But she never went to school, so obviously she didn't have answers for me. I was really excited when I turned five and joined the public school. It was my happy place. When I was in eighth grade, a cute boy named Thomas joined our school. He had long hair that kept falling into his eyes, and his smile was gorgeous. I had a huge crush on him. A few days later, it was his birthday, and he invited the whole class to the party. I was so excited that as soon as I reached home, I told mom I wanted a new dress. But honey, it's the end of the month. I don't think we have enough. Mom, please. You didn't get me anything for my birthday. Think of it as my birthday present. Mom finally agreed, and we went to a nearby thrift store where I got myself a pretty dress. Then I spent the entire evening making a cool bow tie for Thomas. I was sure he'd look dashing wearing it. The next day when I reached the party, I was shocked to see Thomas's mansion. I had no idea he was so rich. I went in and found him standing in a corner with some girls who weren't from our school. I walked over and handed him the present. Happy birthday, Thomas. The girls suddenly turned to me, looking at me like I was some gross bug. Who's she, Thomas? Your maid? Where'd you get that dress from? Your grandma's attic? I could feel myself turning red as they laughed. Just then, Thomas unwrapped my present. Seriously? You actually thought I'd wear this cheap thing? And he threw it on the ground and stepped on it as he walked away. Feeling humiliated, I ran away from the party as fast as my trembling legs could take me. That day, I swore to myself that I'd also be rich one day, no matter what. So I studied my butt off to get into university. And soon after I graduated, I landed my first job as a financial analyst in a big company. One day we had a meeting with the boss where I was supposed to make an important presentation. I was nervous because I'd heard that our boss was a no-nonsense man. I was in the elevator rehearsing my presentation when a man in his 30s walked in talking on his phone. He was tall, handsome, and he had kind eyes. He hardly looked my way, but suddenly the elevator came to a standstill and the lights went out, and I panicked. I, I'm claustrophobic. Please, call security quickly. I need to get out of here. Hey, relax. The power just went out. It should be back on soon. And when it turned on a few seconds later, I realized I was standing right next to the man, holding onto his arm for dear life. He also looked down into my eyes and it felt as if time had stopped. Just then the elevator doors opened and we came out of our trance. I mumbled an apology and rushed to my meeting. Thankfully, the boss hadn't arrived yet, but when he did, my jaw dropped to the ground. It was the elevator guy. He looked a little startled when he saw me, but then he pretended as if we'd never met before. I began my presentation and my ideas impressed everyone, except the boss. He kept shooting question after question at me. By the time he was done, I felt like I was some criminal coming out of interrogation. The next few weeks at the office, he'd just walk by me like I didn't exist. I found out his name was George, and he'd taken over the company from his father when he was just 25. 
I was sure he was very smart, but so was I. And I was here to prove myself. So when I was asked to present in a meeting again, I worked even harder to make sure everything was perfect. But he just kept finding faults with my figures and statistics and finally said, I don't think this will work. I need a better plan by next week. I was fuming as he left. And a couple of hours later, I went to his office. Sir, I just rechecked the figures and they're all correct. I don't know why, but I feel like you just have some problem with me. And what problem would that be? Maybe your work just isn't good enough? Well, I'm confident that it is. I checked your employee file. You didn't go to any top business school in the country. In fact, your university isn't even top 10. It's what I could afford with a scholarship. Not everyone is just born a millionaire, sir. I regretted the words as soon as I said them, but I felt too proud to apologize. He got a phone call just then and ran out of there. I was certain I was going to be fired. As I left the office that evening, I was waiting to cross the road when suddenly it started raining. Just as I was about to dash for cover, someone held an umbrella over me, and I looked up to see that it was my boss. We never finished our conversation. I'm sorry that I offended you. So then, you're not gonna fire me? I want to, but not for the reason you think. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Suddenly, he took my hand and my heart was racing. I'm in love with you, Arena. I fell in love that first day in the elevator. I've tried to ignore my feelings and you, but you're all I can think about. And it wouldn't be appropriate to ask an employee to marry me. I was shocked beyond words. My boss wanted to marry me? I... I don't know what to say. I don't need an answer right away. Take your time to think about it. His kind smile was so reassuring. And on an impulse, I leaned forward and kissed him gently. He dropped his umbrella as he put his arms around me. And we had a perfect first kiss in the rain. I told my parents about it and they were beyond happy. Arena, this is a match sent from heaven. You'll never have to worry about money in your life again. Although I didn't know too much about George, everyone at the office always spoke highly of him. And yeah, there was an age gap between us, but it didn't bother me. I really liked him. So I said yes, and we got married a week later. My life after marriage was the stuff dreams are made of. George loved me to bits and pampered me with expensive gifts, vacations to exotic places, and every comfort in the world. He even insisted on helping my parents out, and I sent them money every month. Over five happy years, we became parents of two beautiful girls, Sophia and Kira. Both of them had amber-colored eyes just like me and were super cute. But when Sophia was three and Kira was one, my world came crashing down. George was coming back from a meeting in London when his plane crashed, and I lost him forever. I was absolutely devastated, but I knew I had to stay strong for my girls. A couple of weeks later, I had some unexpected visitors at my doorstep. It was a lady with teenage kids, and she looked mad at me. Who are you? And what are you doing in my house? Excuse me? This is my house. You wish. I'm George's ex-wife and the mother of his children, and now this house belongs to us. His what? She even went on to show me a copy of his will, and he had indeed left everything to his kids from his first marriage. I couldn't believe it. He'd never even told me about another family, and he hadn't left us anything. I had no choice but to pack my bags and leave with my kids. I moved back to my parents' house since I had nowhere else to go. But my parents had been living off my assistance, and I knew they couldn't feed three more mouths. I immediately started looking for work, which was hard because I'd been out of the job market for so long. In my desperation, I took up a job as a receptionist at a small hotel. Mom would take care of Sophia in my absence, but Kira was too clingy. She wouldn't leave me alone at all. So I decided to sneak her into work. The first few days went smoothly, but one day as I was checking in a couple, Kira crawled out from under my desk and went straight to their baby's stroller. Then she plucked the pacifier out of the sleeping baby's mouth and put it into hers. The sleeping baby started crying, and I had to admit the rogue baby was mine. Naturally, I was kicked out. I tried a few more jobs, but nothing worked because no one wanted an employee who came in with a baby. Then one night, I heard mom crying to dad. We don't even have money for tomorrow's milk. How are we going to feed the kids? That night, 
I made a decision that broke my heart into a million pieces. I was going to move out of my parents' house and give Kira up for adoption. As much as that killed me as a mother, I just couldn't see my baby struggling with poverty the way I did. With a heavy heart, I took Kira to an adoption home and kissed her goodbye. She was so little, she would probably forget me soon. I asked a colleague if I could stay at her place for a while. She agreed, so I decided to move in with her, with Sophia. As I sat down in our new room and started to cry, Sophia came running and put her arms around me. Mom, don't worry, I'll take care of you, and we'll get Kira back too someday. A few months later, it was Kira's birthday, and I missed her terribly. So I went to the adoption home, hoping to see her. There, I got to know she'd been adopted by a rich family. I somehow got their address, and when I reached there, I saw they were celebrating her birthday. Kira looked like a little doll all dressed up, and her adoptive parents were gushing over her. I felt so relieved that my child was loved. I'd never be able to give her the life that she was leading here. So, I quietly went back. I started doing odd jobs until I finally got hired as a junior accountant in a department store. The store's owner was super impressed with what a fast learner I was. I got quickly promoted as a senior accountant. Over time, I invested in some stocks whose prices shot up drastically in a few months. I used the money to start my own accounting firm, and in the next few years, my firm was one of the best in business. I was rich and successful, and I had Sophia who doted on me. Yet, my life felt incomplete without Kira, and Sophia never forgot her either. Mom, we need to bring Kira back home. We have to find out where she is. Honey, the adoption center is not willing to tell me anything about Kira's adoptive family. You think I haven't asked already? But Sophia was determined to find her little sister, and one day, she succeeded too. She came to me looking super excited. Mom, I've got some great news. One of my friend's moms started volunteering at the adoption center where we left Kira. And guess what? She went through the records and gave me this today. I took the paper she was waving excitedly in front of me. Sure enough, it had Kira's picture and her birth date, along with the details of her adoptive parents. We finally get to see Kira. We'll be a family again. Let's go to this address and, and bring her back. Sophia, it's not that simple. We don't even know if Kira knows she's adopted. So what? We can tell her. And what about her adoptive parents? They cared for her all these years. And now we'll just go and ask them to give us our Kira back? Mom, I, I don't care. We've waited so long to find out where Kira is. And now we can't just sit and do nothing about it. Now, I had no choice but to tell her that I knew where Kira was all along. You knew? I've been looking for my sister like a crazy person all this while, and you knew everything and still kept quiet? How could you do that, Mom? Sophia, please don't be mad at me. I'm already so scared that Kira must hate me for abandoning her. I won't be able to take it if you start hating me too. As my voice broke, Sophia immediately softened and hugged me. I could never hate you, Mom. I've seen everything you had to go through for me. I promise to give you all the happiness you deserve. It was my birthday a week later, and Sophia said she'd reserved a table at my favorite restaurant and asked me to meet her there for dinner. When I reached the restaurant, I spotted Sophia and walked over to her table, but my heart almost stopped when I saw another girl sitting there too. She was around 12, and she was beautiful, with her thick, long hair and amber eyes. Kira, is that you? Kira looked just as stunned to see me. Mom, I found Kira, and I told her everything. She doesn't hate you, okay? She really wanted to see you. And suddenly, all that pain I'd been carrying in my chest for years became too overwhelming, and I started crying like crazy. Kira stepped forward and put her arms around me, and I hugged her like I'd never let her go. I missed you so much, my baby. Every single day, I didn't forget you for a moment. I still hear your voice calling me. I love you so much. I'm so, so sorry, Kira. I love you too, Mom. I always wondered what you looked like. What, uh, what about your parents? Do they know you're here, seeing me? Yes, they know. They're okay with it. Why can't I have two families and two moms? Just then, Sophia came and hugged us both. Mom, isn't this the best birthday surprise ever? Happy birthday. It was the happiest moment of my life.